In light of a number of deaths in 1964, including Fireball Roberts, Joe Weatherby, and Jimmy Pardue, the 1965 Daytona 500 featured new rules that were instituted by NASCAR to improve safety and decrease speeds. Bill France explained the rules change before the race. We adopted the rules because we wanted to bring the cost of racing down and also we hoped that it would increase the availability of high performance engines, which I believe it's going to. Chrysler's Hemi and Ford's high rise engines were banned and Chrysler boycotted the race. This left the Ford and Mercury cars to dominate the field and gave rise to new stars like Fred Lorenzen. Lorenzen was a golden boy from Chicago, who quickly rose to racing celebrity status with high profile wins in big races. At the start of the race, Daryl Derringer had the pole position. And here they come, and the green flag will be out, and this race will be underway. Here they go. But that didn't last long as Junior Johnson quickly moved into the lead on the first lap. The Chrysler boycott had created a void that was filled by a wide range of independent drivers. This contributed to a high number of cars that failed early in the race. And there is a car blowing right there. That is car number 76, Larry Frank, in a 64 Ford. That engine just blew. We could hear the concussion of it. By lap six, 14 cars were already out of the race. The race quickly took shape with familiar faces in the lead. Well, Junior Johnson has been running 167 miles an hour for the first 10 laps, or 25 miles. We notice that Darrell Derringer has uh, dropped back and may be coming in. Now, Marvin Panch moving up now. Derringer's left side tire had picked up some debris from a blown engine, sending him to the pits. So at the end of 15 laps, it's Junior Johnson, Marvin Panch, Bobby Johns is now third, Lorenzen is fourth. Junior Johnson was setting the pace when fate intervened. Junior Johnson in the lead. Uh-oh, there he is. Junior Johnson has hit the wall between the number one and the number two turn. Something happened to the car. It looked like it might have blown a tire. Hang on to it, Junior. Wow, all of a sudden, that car just let go toward the outside wall, and he, it's going to come to a stop on the infield. On the restart, there was a new leader. Here comes the green flag, and Marvin Pesch shoots out very quickly. Bobby Johns in car number seven right behind him in second place, and Freddie Lorenzen in car number 28 is now third. Meanwhile, the race continued to take a toll on the field. A lot of the cars had been forced out. Car number 55, Tiny Landau with the carburetor trouble. Larry Frank is out. The Buddy Baker is out of the engine. Uh, Roy Main is out. On the other hand, the Wood Brothers Ford, driven by Marvin Panch, was strong, and he continued to lead while the action behind him intensified. Good battle going on here between Bobby Johnson, Freddie Lorenzen, and Ned Jarrett right behind them. Lorenzen moving ahead of Bobby Johns now to move into second place. Other cars that are out of it, Joe Penland's out with a blown piston. Earl Brooks is out. Uh, he lost the oil pressure. Don Tilly is out. Car not handling properly. Car number two, Jim Bray, out with overheating problems. At the end of 30 laps, 25 cars were left running, so we've had 18 cars drop out with this high speed here today, and it's kind of taking its toll. But the weather would also have a significant impact on the race. It was starting to sprinkle. Those sprinkles turned into solid rain, and the caution flag came out on the 80th lap. It has stayed out now for 23 laps. Uh, the rain has stopped, and we're now on the 104th lap, but the caution flag is still out. The pace car is still out, but we anticipate that the race will be underway here in just a moment. On the restart, Marvin Panch was still leading. There's the green flag. They're under the green flag again. They have gone more than 100 laps or 250 miles, so whatever happens from now on, this race will definitely go into the record books as an official race. With the weather questionable, strategy became crucial, and Fred Lorenzen had gambled on a fuel strategy that he explained before the race to Dan Gurney. Well, Dan, uh, today we're pulling a different gear than anybody else here. We're pulling a 3.00 to 1 gear, strictly for drafting and fuel consumption. You're not going to be revving your engine as much. No, right? I'm only going to turn mine about 6,300 compared to the other guys turning about 7,000, which will make us uh, only four pit stops instead of five. You think you can stretch it with just four pit stops? We're positive. We made a mileage check yesterday, and I can run approximately 41 to 42 laps on fuel. Which will give you almost 
probably almost a lap on a man that makes him five fifths up. It would give me over a lap, about a lap and a half. But the only thing it does hurt is if I ever get to uh, have to run alone, I'm about two miles an hour slower than the rest of the I field. Agree. If he played his cards right, Lorenzen could outlast the leaders on fuel. Marvin Panch hanging doggedly onto the lead here, followed closely by Bobby Johns and Fred Lorenzen just hanging back there in third place. He well knows that both of these cars will have to stop in the pits before he does. First, Bobby Johns hit the pits, followed shortly after by Marvin Panch. And by lap 119, the race had a new leader. And, and Freddie Lorenzen is now in the lead. Well, the strategy is certainly paying off for Freddie Lorenzen right now. He has actually gone 42 laps without a pit stop for fuel, but uh, several of those laps were under the caution flag. And for every one, the, the rule of thumb goes, for every caution lap, you get one extra lap at full throttle. That's the difference. Marvin Panch and Fred Lorenzen battled for the lead as the rain intensified. On lap 129, Panch was right on Lorenzen coming off turn two. Now checking the other part of the field, Bobby John still running in third place. These cars have been one, two, and three uh, all during the last 40 or 50 laps. Uh oh, there is Marvin Panch in a skid down the back stretch. And the yellow light is on right now. In fact, the yellow light, we just noticed that the head of the stretch went on before he started his skid, so it may be that they're having a little uh, precipitation. And Panch has still got his engine running. Just as the yellow flag came out because of the rain, the two cars tangled. Looked like Panch touched the right side of Lorenzen's car and threw him into that long skid. And as you saw, he was going very fast backwards. Lorenzen's car was also damaged. The right front fender we see in the glasses now is bent right up against the right front wheel. But his crew chief, Herb Nab, ordered him to stay out on the track. He was counting on the weather to shorten the race. This turned out to be another good gamble for Lorenzo. Well, the yellow caution flag has turned to red, and that automatically signals all the drivers to stop. The race has been halted at the end of 133 laps. The rain started to come down just moments ago, and it is pouring. No chance at all to run, and all the drivers now have gotten out of their cars. They've run under the pit area for cover. In victory lane, Fred Lorenzen was disappointed with the shortened race, but still pleased with his victory. The weather has been really bad here at Daytona. The rain has come down and has stopped the race completely. And just moments ago, the NASCAR officials declared it an official race at the end of 133 laps out of a possible 200. Freddie Lorenzen, the winner, Darrell Derringer in second place, Bobby Johns in third place, and in fourth place was Balmer. And so it means that the Mercury's got two of the first four, the Ford's got the other two, and of course the big one went to Freddie Lorenzen. And Fred, you've waited six long years, congratulations. Well, I just never thought I could do it. Uh, the 50 mile and the 100 mile in the last couple of weeks, everything just sort of seemed to go wrong. I guess just getting out and run, and this is the one I always wanted all my life. So that's pretty much the story of the rain-shortened 500-mile race at Daytona. It only went 133 laps, but exciting it was during the course of the race. Now this is Bill Fleming saying so long from Daytona, Florida, where Freddie Lorenzen has won his first Daytona 500, and a great race it was for him to win, too. <laughs>